so I went ahead and created another project, and I'm running right now 2018.4. Um, as a rule, I normally try to support Unity's LTS version. Um, for this moment, uh, 2019.4 is unavailable, uh, or I haven't checked in the last couple of days. But usually, LTS support means this is the long-term support from Unity, and one of the great features about it is they're not adding any new features, which means it's only bug releases and fixes to existing components. Whereas in other different versions, uh, 0.1, 0.2, and 0.3, they can add things in the middle of something, and sometimes that breaks your stuff. So right now, I stick with around the 2018.4 series. So uh, animations. Um, I thought about doing, I was trying to figure out what I want to do for this, and I decided to start with some basic animations that you can do inside Unity. Now, the way I show things in Unity, I show bad and good at the same time. Why? Because a lot of people rush into things. And I want to make sure you understand why you don't do it this way so you know how to do it the proper way. Here's an example. So I have created a new 3D scene. There's nothing in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click. I'm going to create a cube. Okay, there's my cube. It's all set at zero, zero, zero. I can frame into a beautiful little cube. And if I grab an axis, you'll see I can move it left and right. Okay. So here I am right here. I'm going to spin around because my camera is on this side. So if I move to the left, move to the right, we're all good. Now, to create animations, it's pretty simple. What you can do is you go ahead and go to Window, Animations, Animations. And that pulls up this little window right here. And if you notice, it says to begin animating cube, which is what we currently have selected, uh, create an animator and an animation clip. Okay, I can do that, but Unity can do that for us, where I just click Create. And then over here, I'm going to have my um, Explorer asset directory. So I'm going to say animations. I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to call this something simple like move cube. So I have created a move cube animation clip. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and reset this back to zero. So we're in the middle of our world. Now, in Unity, there's two axes. I mean, there's two coordinate systems. There's a world coordinates when you're in the root of the hierarchy. Then there's the local one, which is based upon the parent of the previous. The parent of the previous of here is the root object itself. So that's looking at like a world coordinate system. So if I were to change my X over here to one, I've moved one unit. And in Unity, by default, one unit is around one meter. Okay, so at the positive X direction, if I went Negative one, that's a negative x direction. Okay. Now that we still have our cube selected, you will notice that it created an animator. And it says the controller is this cube as well as the avatar, which we don't have anything. So let's go ahead and I'm going to click record. So when I click record, that puts this into an automatic mode in which anything you do to that object will be recorded. For example, if I go ahead and I specify, let's just say on frame 30, I want my cube to be, um, let's just say, three units over to my right. Okay? And then on one minute, I want it to be back at center. So now I can stop the record and I can... Um, we can hit spacebar, we can hit play. I'm going to be using GUI to show what I'm doing instead of all the little shortcuts that you can do. But you can just hit space to play it. So there it is moving. That's kind of cool. Okay. Now, to ever have a looping animation, uh, the key thing is you have to make sure your start, your start frame and your end frame is the same. So let's just say I deleted that. And I want to go ahead and hit play. It will just go that one direction. We don't want that. What we want to do is we can just highlight these keys, control C or right click and say, there is no copy. Okay. Just got to highlight them and say copy. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to move my scrubber over to one minute and paste. So here we go. 
not too bad. If you look over here on the left, you will see the cube object, and I have modified the position. And because I have modified something, it has recorded those somethings. If I were to go here to the middle, and I click record, and I change the rotation. Let's just say we want the rotation to be 45. Okay? I move over here. The rotation started off at 0. It goes to 45. Ah, it did not go back to 45. So here I can change it back to 0. And now we see that we have it animating. Now, we have samples. This is essentially your frames per second. Okay? Normally, I deal with 30 frames per second when I'm working with it. By default, Unity puts it at 60. Um, so if I hit play, you'll see how fast it goes. If I change this to 30 and I play it, you see it goes slower. So if I need to slow it down even more, such as 15, We've added more, and it just basically moved the time frame. Now, just because I have moved the position, rotation, I can also do scale. So I'm going to record. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to change my scale of my Y to, oh, I don't know, 2. Then I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to change this back to 1. So stop it. Click back. Okay, that was fun. We have animated something here. Well, what will you use this for? Um, as an example, you can have this as a door opening. You can have it um, elevators. You can have it as a platform game where you're going to have a drawbridge that goes up and down. Okay, there are many useful reasons why you would want to have this. But here's the caveat. We did all this wonderful work. Hence the reason why I was showing you the bad up front. Okay. Now, let's just say I want to move this. And I was like, okay, we start off at 0, 0, 0. I want to move it, oh, I don't know, there. And I hit play. Watch what happens. It jumps back to the 0, 0, 0. Because when I was actually recording it, it recorded the positions of where it was. And we recorded it at 0, 0, 0. Well, you know, you would think, okay, well, maybe I want to make this a child. And I can just take this cube and put it into there. Reset it. Move this parent. Hit play. And that's how you can get your animations fixed. So if when you, when you have your animations at the beginning and it jumps back to where you recorded it at, it has to do with it needs to be a child of another object. In that case, I just put it with the parent. And there we go. It's playing there. And I can move my parent around. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. I have no problems at all. Now, I showed you. Um, moving position, rotation, scale. But we can do other things with it. For example, I'm going to go ahead and create another folder. Called this materials. I'm going to right click, go ahead and create a material. We're going to call this cube material. I am going to assign, if I click here, you'll see if I open up materials, it's by default material. I'm going to drag this, put it on top of that. So now we have cube materials. Okay. Same thing. I have the cube selected. I can click record and I can move to the middle one right here. And I will click my cube material and I will change this to red. So now we got red, red, red. Now we're going to change this to white. I'm sorry, I did that slightly wrong. So in the actual, once you have the cube selected, you would want to be changing it right here. So I'm going to go here. We're going to leave that white. I'm going to slide over. 
choose that and make that red. See how it starts off white, then goes to red, and then I can have it go to a different color. I was modifying the project instead of the instance. So there we go. We have it animating with different colors. But let's not stop there. What else can we do? Well, what other properties do we have here? Well, we have a mesh render. So let's just say after five seconds, we want to turn off the mesh render. And we want it to appear when it's 25 seconds later, almost like it got teleported. At 105, we're going to turn it off. Five seconds before, or, or fifth second before, we're going to have it come back on. So hit play. So you can modify anything that's attached to the game object is the key point I'm trying to give to you. Okay? And if you had other scripts or components attached to this game object, you can also turn those off. You can set your booleans. You can do a whole bunch of different things. So the other thing I want to show you along with this is let me go ahead and delete all these keys. Okay, now we're back to nothing. So my 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 animation clip that I currently have has no keys in it at all. I'm going to go ahead and record. And I'm going to, let's say, move over two units this time. No, I want to go a little further. I want to go a little further. I want to go four. OK. So I started right here. So if I stop this and hit play, it will jump to these four units over, which we don't want. We have a cube selected. I'm going to move this to. Let's just say one minute. Drag and move all these keys down here. Record this. And then move the scrubber back to here. And then change this to zero. So I have purposely done it backwards. So I know where I want it to stop at. So if you have a specific animation that you need to have a... To have something happen. Whether it's a... A can flying through the air, and you need to have it hit a wall without physics. You can know where your destination is, set that, and then set the starting point. And now if I hit play. Okay. Now I'm going to give this a little bit more time because I want to show one specific. I want to show. Let's go back. Hit play. You see how it's slowing down? Okay. By default, Unity puts curves in everything. So if you look down here, there's a dope sheet and there's a curve sheet. So I'm going to click curves. And here is my curves right here. Okay. And you can see. Go ahead and just bring that up. So when it when it plays, I'm going to hit play. I'll let you see it all. Oops. I can just do the scrubber. So you see how it slows down? Now I'm going to do the scrubber, and it slowly stops. Well, sometimes we want things just to happen. We don't want to actually fool with the curve. We can click these little tangents right here. Go ahead and click that. And I can change the curve. I'm actually having it going backwards. So now when I scrub it, it's going to like wind up and then shoot forward really fast. Another thing we can do is right click, go to both tangents, and say linear. Come here, right click, both tangents, and linear. Did I not have it selected? I don't think I'm selecting it very well.
Oh, did I break it? Okay, so now when I hit play, it should not slow down. It just stops. So that's kind of animation in a nutshell. Just the big thing to remember is when you're doing this, make sure you, you need to move it around. You move your item that you just animated into a parent, and then you move the parent around. Um, along with this is going to be an animation controller and an animation clip. If I double click on the animation controller, we will see I have something called a move cube. That move cube is actually the animation clip, which you can see over here on the right, that uh, references the animation controller. The animation controller is what drives all the different types of animations. Um, you'll see a property over here called speed. If I were to change that to five, so it'd be a five X multiplier, and I hit play, you will see it's playing five times faster. Let's go ahead and reset this so it's in the middle. Okay, now let me go ahead and go back here. I'm going to set my speed back to one. And I can also slow it down like uh, 0 0.025. Maybe I put it too slow. Yeah, it is creeping. It's like a gelatinous cube. Hold on. Let's make that probably not. What would you make it a quarter? See, it's moving along. Okay. Um. And you'll see along with this cube, we still have our, our animator controller. I show you that because the next thing I want to show you is let's just say you've gone to a website and you found a model and you wish to bring a character humanoid biped into your game. So in this case, I went to the asset store and I specifically searched for a model that did not have any animations onto it. And I believe I have called elf, elf, um, elf character, I think I found it. Yes, I found character elf. It's free. Um, I download it today. Um, you'll have a button here called download. And then after that, you'll have an import. So I am purposely getting an Elf Mesh FBX, which is what I'm looking for. Um, I can confirm that one of the things I do is I look at the package content, and here's everything that's supposed to be installed in your machine. I went under Mesh, and I found out that this F is an FBX. So it's not a Maya file, it's not a Max file, it's not a Blender file, it's a straight up uh, FBX. So I haven't imported, wait, no, I haven't imported yet. Okay, I'm gonna go to scene. Let's just disable our cube for the moment. I'm gonna take our elf character, bring him to the middle of the scene. Let's go ahead and reset him, get focus on him. Spin him 180. So there he is and all his, what? Naked glory. So, with this model specifically, we need to apply materials to it. If I open this up and I look at body mesh, <laughs> I will see this is the mesh itself. And when I go to materials, it will say 07 default. So something happened to his materials. I know by clicking on this click elf, I mean this character elf, I can drag and drop it and there it is. Okay, he's in what's called a T pose. When you're looking for characters that you want to rig and animate, Look for ones or design yours in what's called a T-pose. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click on Mesh and show an Explorer. And I got, my, uh, I got my little directory here. 
So I'm going to open up another tab. And I'm going to go to a company called Mixamo, M-I-X-A-M-O dot com. And here it is right here. And I've already done this earlier, but I'll walk you through how this works. So what you want to do is you want to click Upload a Character. And in this case, I am going to grab from the mesh directory here, the elf mesh, and drag and drop it right there. And Mixamo is entirely free. Adobe now owns them. And they have a plethora of different animations that you can use. It usually they they uh, had a ability to actually set all your points and everything, but now they just do it automatically. So now this is what's classified as an auto rigger. Okay, you can modify some of the chain. You can modify some of the settings, but you know what? This isn't too bad. So I'm going to click next, and then I'm going to pick an animation. Let's do I don't know defeated. No, we need something more happier. How about taunt? So there's our character right there. So I'm going to click download. And I'm going to choose. There's many options. There is an FBX and FBX for Unity. When I uploaded this model, I did not give it a skin. That's why it says with skin and without skin. Um, I have not found any difference between FBX and FBX for Unity. And as you see here, by default, Mixamo sets your frames per second for 30. You can do 24 and 60. I usually leave it at 30. Keyframe reductions. Don't have to worry about that. So with the default settings, I can click download. Okay. So now that has been downloaded. And I am going to bring over a file, and it's called taunt. So I'm going to slightly clean up my directories here so I don't get completely confused. I'm going to take taunt, put it right here. So I still have the original elf mesh right here. And I'm going to grab taunt and brag taunt right there. I'm going to zero him out. Move him over a little bit so he's side by side. Flip him 180. Okay, so there they are. If I hit play, what should happen? Nothing. So when you download from Mixamo, it gives you an FBX file with the animation embedded into it. If I open up Taunt, you will see it says Mixamo.com. I would highly recommend that you change this name to something different. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, so what happens is if, you're ha if you don't have a T-pose, um, when you do rigging, um, there are envelopes around each of the different bones that you have in your model. So think of a skeletal structure just like the skeletons, the skeleton that supports your body right now. Okay. And the way it rigs is it puts envelopes to influence all the vertices that's attached to a, uh, a bone. I can actually show that to you by clicking here. I'm going to select, clicking here, going to um, I'm going to save the scene. So here I am. These this is your skeletal structure. <clears throat> so if I click that bone, for example, there it is, left upper arm, and the envelopes are going to influence all these vertices right here. I believe I can show you the vertices. Um so it's going to basically do all this. In a modeling application, this is what you call painting weights. And you would say, hey, I want this bone to influence all these vertices right here. Okay? Um, but otherwise, uh, if the arms were down, what would happen is if this envelope right here, which I believe I can pull this down. So let's just say you have your model like that. When it does its automatic rigging envelopes, the influence, it may pull some of the side right here. So 
and this bone may be assigned to these vertices right here. So when your arm moves, part of the hip will move with it. It will, you know, it will stretch, and we don't want that. So I'm going to say revert, and then done. Okay, let's go back to shaded mode. Okay, so here we are. We're looking at our characters, and I hit play. Nothing should happen, which is correct. Why? Just because we downloaded animations doesn't mean we've done anything to it. Okay, so just like what we had with the cube, if I click the elf mesh, you'll see an animator. It has an avatar, which is what we just saw a moment ago, but it does not have a controller. If we go back to our cube, we will see that it has a controller. We can go ahead and make a controller. So I'm going to right click, say create, and then we're going to go down to animate animator controller. So we're going to say uh, character elf. So I'm going to go ahead and assign that to there as well as the taunt. Okay, so I've assigned an animator controller. Now I hit play. So what happens? Oh, he goes into a bicycle pose and he doesn't do anything. So here's why. <laughs> the If you open up the animator controller, remember like what we had with the cube. When we open up the cube, we had it pointing to an animation. Well, with our character elf that we just created, we don't have any animations. We have to add one in there. So if I open up my models and I go down to my Mixamo and I drag this over here, you will see I have this. And I can say taunt. I have renamed it. So now I know what's supposed to happen. So let's go back to my scene view and hit play. He's playing, but he's not. Why is that? Because when I download it from Mixamo, he has a rig where he doesn't. Okay, so that's the difference. I can go back to my elf, okay, and you will see it's just create from this model. Um, where if I go to taunt, I create from this model also. But you see, it's telling you, hey, there's no, there's no, um, there's no skeleton here. I can actually use copy from another avatar. So taunt got had an avatar created. And I can click Taunt Avatar and then drag this there and hit play. But there you go. And I can always just take this material and assign it there. So he starts off in a default T pose. And he's starting off with his idle animation because that's how we downloaded him as. <coughs> So look, think of the what you download from Mixamo as templates that you want to be calling. Okay, so we still want to use our elf model. We don't really want to use taunt, but that avatar that we just downloaded is going to be universally used for all our other ones. So I can also go back to Mixamo, and I said, okay, let's just look at another one. Let's do uh, jumping. That's jumping down. Let's do something about oh, boxing. So let's download that. Keep all the default settings. I click download. It says boxing is downloaded. I'm going to go to Unity. I'm going to drag my boxing into my models folder. There it is. And if I drag him out here, reset his position, spin him 180, and then move him to that side, and hit play. Once again, he's not working because I need the controller. Okay. 
Okay. Well, why did he change even though we had boxing? When I stop this, he's in a boxing pose because on the animation controller, I have it calling taunt. Okay. So we can make a decision if we want to. What I normally do is have the entry go into an idle. So let's go ahead and choose an idle here. Do we see any idles just throwing up here? Pistol idle, no. Sitting. Let's just do a quick search for idle. There we go. Download. Default. It says I have downloaded. See if I can find my models directory faster this time. There it is. Models. Okay. So I don't need to keep bringing those in. I'm just really interested in the animation clips I got created. So, for example, I can bring in my idle Mixamo. Drag that right there. Click it. Rename it. Idle. Okay. I now need to make this idle its primary. I can do that by as layer default state. So now if I go back to my scene view, all three of these should go into idle because they're all using the same animation controller. I go back to animator. I can do a right click, make transition to taunt. Okay. The other one that we had was boxing. So I'm going to be choosing boxing. Drag this up here. Choose it. Say boxing. I'm going to right click, make transition here. So what does this transition do? Well, a transition allows you to go from one state, because each one of these is a state, to another state. Right now, it really should get confused because I'm telling it to go to both taunt and boxing at the exact same time. So let's see what happens. In fact, I'm going to move this animator. No, I'm going to leave it up there. So I'm going to select the elf mesh, and I'm going to hit play. And you'll see it's playing the idle animation. And then it fired to taunt. So now if you look, let me, get, let me bring the uh, camera a little closer. There we go. Go back to the animator. So it's playing idle, and then they all go in. They went to boxing. At the same time, they went to taunt because it was confused. So what we can do is we can go to parameters here, and I can create a parameter. Let's just say we want a bull and say is taunting. Okay. So what I can do here is I can say my conditions. So I only want it to go to is taunting if it's true. I only want it to go to boxing if it's true. So let's go ahead and create one more parameter. Bull is boxing. And if it's boxing is true, then I want it to go that way. Okay. And after it's done playing the animation, I want to transition back. Right click, make transition back. So by default, I have nothing. So it should or should not go to any of these taunting. Let's find out. Because both those conditions are false. And it stopped. Why did it stop? Because we did not have our idle set for looping. If I click here and I click this motion, you will see looping time is not on. So I go to my idle. I go to my animation. And this is loop time. I can say apply. Now I want to hit play. It's moving over. It's moving over. It's moving over. It hits the end. Now it goes. It's looping. So if I were to turn on is taunting before it goes over, now it goes to taunt. Now I'm going to turn off taunt. 
Now I'm going to turn on boxing. When it gets to the end, it evaluates. Okay, it showed boxing. And I got done with the boxing and came back. So why is it only doing it to this one and not all the other ones? Because you have the animator controller on it, each one of them has its own different properties. If I was to click um, the is boxing on, and then I choose the boxing one, and I say is boxing on, and I say the taunt one, and I says is taunting, <coughs> you can quickly see how that's now changing. So let me go back to my elf main, and I only want him idling. So he will only idle, and the other one, based upon which one we have, the boxing and taunting, will go. Now, you can also, with these parameters up here, access this from your script or your component. So if you can go ahead and do a, I guess I can. Um, we can have it so it sets an animator. You want to be calling the animator itself and do it doing a uh, set bool, whether true or false, and because these are now public, you can access them. So if you hit, oh, I don't know, your attack key, you can have it um, do the boxing. If after uh, 45 seconds, you can call the taunt. Otherwise, you just stay in idle. Uh, does anyone want to see how scripts are done with that? As we wait for them to answer, I certainly would. Okay. Railroad Studios says he wants or he or she wants to. Sure. Okay, so here's my project. Uh, out of habit, I always hold down Control and then hit KD. Okay, and what that does is that re. Um, if I had uh, my my braces like this, it's just a different format. It sets it differently for me. Okay, so one of the things we're going to need is a public animator. Animator. Okay. And then in here we're gonna say um, if input dot get key down uh, key code dot oh I don't know P for punch. Set bool ename in this case I says I think I called it is um B O X I in boxing and we're gonna give it a value we're gonna say true and then over here we'll say I guess I should make that B for boxing but P for punch I got it now as a rule what I normally do is come over Double click it and I will highlight this name and I'll bring into my just make sure I get the spelling properly. Sometimes I'll fat finger or something. Okay, so here I'm calling the animator, which is the animator controller, and I'm going to set the bool to is boxing. So I'm going to set by default, I'm going to set this, they're all, should be defaulted back to nothing, nothing, and nothing. So let's go to our boxing. <laughs> and we're going to add uh, this, this script here. I'm going to grab this animator and put it there. So I'm dealing with boxing in this one specific case. So hit play. It should be all be doing the exact same thing. It should be all going through idling. Why? Because the animator controller 
for this boxing has no properties. So if I come down here and I hit B for boxing, you will see now it is now is boxing, and now he just did a boxing. Obviously, I would need to reset that. So we have a couple options here. The animation clips allow you to do an event to call another script as long as it's attached to that game object. I know it's a lot of words, but I'll try and show you what that means. So um, that right there, remember I showed you the um, cube and how we move the position and rotation and scale? That right there is all the keyframes for that animation for boxing. That one's for taunt and that one's for idle. So if you really need to change things inside that already exist, you can. You can go ahead and look at all these wonderful curves and everything. Good luck to you. Um, I don't recommend it, but yes, you can do it. Now, um, I was showing you about the uh, the event system. So let's just say at the end of at the end of boxing, at the end of this right here. Um, let me go to my scene view. There he is. Oh, that's taunt. Really? That was weird. Oh. Huh. Okay. So let's just say at the end of this uh, taunt real quick, you can record. Oh, it's not going to let you record because it's read only. Um, what you have to do here is you're going to have to copy. <coughs> I can show it better with the cube, but to get around this, when I when I brought the elf mesh in, uh, when I brought the boxing and the um, taunt in, it created this. You would just need to copy this, and so it's not read only. Um, but with the cube, let me go ahead and show you because it's easier with the cube real quick. With the cube, I want it to at the end of at the end of its movement here, there's a add a keyframe and then there's an add an event. So I have an event. You can barely see it. There's a little blue tick mark on the top right here. If I click that blue tick mark, <coughs> it will say, "Hey, what function do you want to fire?" Uh, as an example. Let's just go ahead and create a real quick script. Um, show event debug. And here we're going to go A cube finished moving. I'm letting it compile. I'm going to go to my cube. I'm going to say show event. Put this here. Go back to my cube. Make sure it's selected. I click on my little event. Hit the drop down. Cube finished moving because it found all the functions that's attached to that game object that has the animation attached to it. In this case, it's cube. So I'm going to window general console. I'm going to take my console and put it. We can put it right here because the game view is going to kick on. So what we're looking for is when the cube. Let me back up some. When the cube is done moving, then it's going to fire the event. Okay, we don't have to wait that long. Um, animations. We'll just make it one. Okay. And then, whoop, I finished moving along. Moving along. Moving along. So let's just say, reasons why you would use that is, let's just say you wanted to play a sound effect. So you have the rifle, or you have the gun, and then 
Um, they they bring the animation brings up and get ready to fire, and you want to hear the or you know the gun cocking or something of that nature. You can actually time your animation. Let me make sure I select it. You can time your animation to exactly where you want to put that event. Okay, so in this case, I didn't have to put it at the end. I put it here in the middle. So when it reached the middle, uh, it would display, I am finished moving. But we actually can have multiple events if we so want to. So I have added another uh, event. I'm going to put this one at the end and then put this one in the middle. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to say Okay. Now I'm going to choose here, cube middle moving, and then confirm that this one is set for cube finish moving. Clear this, hit play. I'm in the middle, and then finish moving. So you can have particle effects flying off. You can have, you know, you can queue up and play other things that you want to do. You can send a network connection. There's all sorts of things you can do with the event that's attached to that. Okay, do we have any other questions? While we wait for questions to tee up in chat, I have one that will reveal the kind of games that I work on. Uh, how would you modify these animations for gravity? How would you set that in so you wouldn't have to keep changing it for each planet? But they vis visit different locations with different gravity the animation would immediately change speeds. Well, you would do all your uh, rigid bodies on your parent. Okay? So let's just say you have a solar system, and you want things falling. So you would do on the parent of what has the animation, <coughs> uh, you're not going to mix rigid bodies and animation, because rigid, I mean, the uh, animations are set to specific keys. Otherwise, they're going to be fighting. So, like, here, I can add a a rigid body to this while this is falling i could have a uh i could have it like like uh like a planet spinning around a sun if you want something like that because if i hit play here the cube's going to move as it falls as it falls forever it's just going to go back and forth back and forth in fact let's go ahead and semi cheat And let me make sure I turn off gravity for a second. Take these and move these probably somewhere around there. What? No questions? I'll add the comment that obviously all of this has to do with 3D. If you're trying to use Unity in 2D, animations are handled differently. Yes, and we can do another lecture on that maybe next week. Yeah, would people be through? Yes. Would people be interested in a uh, 2D animation tutorial? I actually personally would be so. That sounds like a good topic for next time. Railroad yeah. Studios says yes, so that's a, one good vote for it. Would you want to see animations as in going through a specific number of sprites? Like you want to have a a run cycle, a walk cycle, a jump cycle, and a duck cycle. 
Was that what you would want to see? That's a good basic. An eight frame, eight frame walk or something like that. Okay. I think that's a good basic one to uh, to implement. Okay. Railroad Studios says yes, all of it. <laughs> I like your philosophy, Railroad Studios. Absolutely. That's always what to ask for. Well, I, I know a few artists, and maybe I can get them to do some graphics. Otherwise, there's always the store that Unity provides. Yes, indeed. Very pleased with it. All right, we're going to give you another minute or so to come up with questions in chat. Uh, Dr. Unity, thank you very much for doing this. Great information. Great yeah. tutorial. Bad Q was very happy with the uh, lesson on why to use the T-pose. Yeah. yeah, it's so funny. You get so used to using the T-pose, you never even think about why. Yep. Yeah. It just and, is. Uh, I have, I just got done, uh, Cell Block Studios, which is my company, has released a game back in October called uh, Cutthroat Cavern, which is a mobile uh, backstabbing game. It's a single player, and it's available on Apple and Android, as well as in the next, coming up shortly, we're coming out with another game called Legends of Draxia, which is going to be another type of mobile card game that's going to be out. And by... Later this year will be another game called uh, Rube Works, worked on uh, Rube Goldberg machines, and you'll, you'll be able to do it in VR. Can people should be a lot of fun to play. Can people find these in the Cell Block Studios Steam Store, or are they separate Steam stores? Uh, they're on both. Uh, not on Steam. It's only on I, uh, iTunes. Ah, uh, gotcha. So, uh, so iTunes, Cutthroat Caverns. You got this one right here. You can all. Ooh, wow! Somebody did a. Game and play in January, okay. And you can also go to Cutthroat Caverns. Hey, Tom Vassell, awesome, good guy. Who? Tom Vassell did a review, or is he the designer? You have to help me out here. Is this him? To the left. Him. Yeah. So that's yeah, that's he, the designer. He did, he did the original card game. Right. We ported it over, and we are also we're nominated for the 2020 Origin Award. For best digital adaptation of a physical card game. That's so, great. We will find out whether we win in, I believe it's September, is when they're actually going to be announcing. Bad. So we were one of 1,500 entries, and they only picked four. So. Excellent. Bad Q asks, how about working with photorealistic objects? Yes, that is possible. Uh, Quixel, Quixent, Quix, Mega Scans, something like that. Hold on. Let me see if I can find that real quick. Yeah, I said it right. So we have these uh, these mega scans where you can actually take pictures using your phone of objects and it makes a 3D mesh of it. Now, <coughs> my experience when I've used it, the geometry was a little too high to my taste, but... Um, it was a couple years ago when I last played with it. So these are also, you know, 3D models that people just used their phones and uh, was able to do. Now I per I got a new phone recently before the uh, uh, the lockdown here, and I have an application on my phone called 3D Scanner. Now I have an Android phone, and this little 3D scanner was pretty good. I was able to take a apple on my table and get a nice 3D scan of it with texture. And I grabbed one of my kids' uh, action figures and sure enough, you know, I had a 3D representation of the action figure too. So, I was pretty impressed with the 3D scanner that's on the Android. Good to know. But yes, we can also go over in one of these lessons uh, doing of uh, making 3D geometry from photos. All right, excellent. Well, I think next week, though, we'll be animating 2D objects. That is correct. So that sounds like a great topic. All right, not seeing any other questions or suggestions. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Cellblock Studios. Check out those games from Cellblock Studios. Uh, I have a Kickstarter going on. Look for Alexius, PAX, P-A-X, Alexius on Kickstarter. And you can back that for some great tabletop RPG stuff. Uh, remember to join us next week. For, as we said, 2D animation in, uh, 
in unity. Thanks one more time to our patrons from Patreon. Jennifer, Trey Carpenter, Stephen Coffey, Ron Jones, the artist, and James Simpson. Mark 14th, we'll have Mark Mandel from Google talking about you can't just add more servers for multiplayer games. April 20th, we have our R&D tax credit webinar and lots more good streams coming up with the Georgia Streaming Network. If you're not already a member of the GGDA, please join. Subscribe to our newsletter. Join the Facebook page. So much stuff happening now despite everyone being locked down. It's like there's more content than ever. And wonderful Snarf Quest itself. You can grab that on Steam, can't you? Yes, and very shortly on PlayStation 4, 5, and Xbox uh, One and Xbox Series X. Excellent. All right, well, thank you very much. Big round of applause for James Simpson. Great uh, presentation. Thanks to all of you for joining us tonight. And if we don't see you on other people's streams, we will see you Tuesday back here. Take care, every.